everyone wants to get better at Rocket League, but figuring out exactly what you need to improve on can often be incredibly difficult. And it's made even harder when you only look at the game one way. You see, most players only look at the game through their own perspective. So today, I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to look from the perspective of the players we are trying to beat, seeing what opportunities we're giving our opponents and learning how our play needs to be improved to cause more issues for them. Here we go, looking through the eyes of our opponents here. Going through this game, we're really going to try to highlight what we need to work on to help us improve overall. So let's go ahead and kick this right on off. Away we go. Fairly standard kickoff, nothing too special about it. We go get the mid boost on the left side there. And now we have a free touch, but right here out the gate, you can see that this is really too heavy of a touch we have completely free space here lots of time on this ball and we end up getting too far behind it push it too far ahead and that invites our opponent to come in for the free challenge so in a situation like this you'd really like to see us keep the ball closer so that we can at least get a challenge but alas it was not to be ends up being a free ball for our opponents and a wonderful shot from eight master with k slightly out of position is going to net them the first goal on we go, see how we get along on the next kickoff. Out to the side, ball pops up. And you can see just this hesitation here that's really going to invite my opponent to come in for this ball. So the ball does pinch into a bit of an awkward place off the ceiling. With ball cam on here, we're clearly staring just straight up at this ball. What we would like to see is our ability to have better vision. It'd be nice to just use our right stick to take a quick peek to see if we have any opponent possibly coming in for this, that will tell us how quickly we do need to go up for this ball because we don't want to just assume that our opponent's going to see this ball coming down on top of us and that they're just going to let us have it. We should always assume that we're probably going to have some pressure on us and if we want to confirm that we don't, we really need to check to see that that is the case. If we don't check, we cannot assume that we have this space. So this hesitation is very, very bad. As you'll see, it results in a completely free win of the ball for our opponents and allows them to bring the ball back into our half. Now, if we look at this rotation into net from us, it is very tight of a rotation. We're coming straight down the field like this. We're going to pick up this one moose pad and then we're going to swing into net facing out this way from around here. Now, what this does is it allows us to cover this near post and about the first half of the net but anything that goes over the net over here is going to be completely open for an attacking player so what we might like to see here we recognize that we have just a, a little bit of time based on what's happening here so we could have taken an extra second to go out this way and face the play along this way because that would allow us to drive up the backboard if we need to it would allow us to jump out if we need to it would allow us to cover the entirety of the net if we need to so by rotating into net so tightly it really does limit the options that we have available to just the first half of the net and as we'll see if ball comes across we do get a little lucky we do miss the ball and luckily our opponent has not dove in for it but a very dangerous situation there for sure where we could have gotten punished for our poor defensive positioning opponent low boost in an awkward spot that's almost dangerous and let's look at this because here we're gonna see something very nitpicky but something that's relatively important so we see me over there picking up the boost now the important thing that's gonna happen here is right as this player makes contact you can kind of see it over there right now there's a little orange light underneath my car and that's because i'm initiating a flip in this direction now the problem with that is that we're flipping and committing in a certain direction before we know exactly what's happening with the ball we've just picked up full boost we can easily get back to net there's no immediate threat on the goal there's no reason we need to be back there at this precise moment so we can kind of take our time a little bit and we don't need to commit to using this flip we can just drive and the reason we don't want to commit to using that flip is because when this touch comes out we want to be able to react to wherever it goes as quickly as possible we don't want to be stuck in a flip animation while a touch on the ball is coming out 
It's a very minute thing, but as you can see, that flip there caused us to just land now, and now our opponent is already up in the air while we're still flat-footed on the ground. So this is actually going to delay our ability to jump up for this ball, and it's going to allow our opponent to get a clean beat on us. Because instead of being able to jump earlier, we're just able to jump now, but we are already clean beat, and we are lucky that that was not a goal. Off to the side, control for our opponent. I hate this play, so you're only going to see me for a split second here as we as we come around and uh here we are right here in the frame and for whatever reason we're trying to challenge this ball when it is very clear that our opponent has complete possession so i'm not sure why we are diving in so aggressively here in our opponent's corner and even worse we're like fully committing and jumping at it so that's a waste of space for us we've just given a free ball and now it's a 2v1 for our opponents. Luckily, the first touch is a little too heavy, so they can't do much with it. And our teammate does a great job. And again, hey, let's take a look at this rotation, shall we? Where are we driving down the field? So K comes over, gets in touch to the side. Here we are, right down the middle of the field. And again, there's no reason that we need to be back in net this fast. So we could again take a more looping angle in our rotation which would give us an easier opportunity to play anything that comes along the back wall by coming straight down the middle of the field now we have to hook around or we have to randomly swoop out really quick or we have to jump really awkwardly and the middle of the field is a great place to get boost but it also makes it really hard to play unexpected bounces on balls because you don't have a lot of angles to play with in the middle of the field you really want to be off to the sides because you have more angles to play with in front of your net. And we're going to see exactly this problem here. We rotate straight down the middle of the field. Ball pinches into a weird space. Now let's look at this. If we were instead of here, if we were over here facing this way, this is no problem. The ball bounces up. We can drive up the backboard to get the play. We can jump up to read it off the ceiling. We would have been A-OK, -okay, but because we we're in the middle of the field, now we had to swoop out to the side and try our best to get up to this ball in a very awkward situation. And as you can see, we're a little out of position, a lot out of position actually, and we can't get back in time. And it's another free goal that the opponents did not have to work very hard for. Opponent gets the clear out, we're rotating back, free ball here, let's see what we do with it. Pop downfield looking for a pass, perhaps K is up in the air. Bad clear, and we're going to be right there to pounce on it. Fantastic. So we could have maybe done a little bit more with this ball. We had a full boost, but at the same time, we already have one opponent in our half. So if we go quickly here, we're going to limit the chances that he has to get back. And the fact that we go so fast is what's going to open up this goal opportunity. Because we bang the ball downfield, we do have a teammate down there, which is kind of the idea. We're going to hit the ball, look for our teammate to maybe jump. If he doesn't, we'll still have some offensive pressure here as the ball heads to the backboard. Because my teammate now jumps, 8 Master has to figure out if K is going to touch the ball or if he is going to have to be responsible for the ball off the backboard. K does miss, but because of the limited amount of time to react, 8 Master doesn't get the best clear. It's going to bounce right out to me. And because of how fast we went and this guy having to rotate all the way back from our own half, he is not able to turn fast enough to be able to get in front of this shot. And that does net a free goal for us. Just over half the game to go. See how we get along here. K, good flip reset pass. Oh dear, that's a collision from our opponents and we're going to take advantage. Now, this looks like a really easy play to take advantage of, right? Like our opponents are bumped right in front of the net. But the important thing is that we still have to place this ball correctly. It would be really easy to just try to autopilot this play and just hit the ball in the direction of the net. But it's really important that we hit this ball around the approaching defenders. Because if we hit this ball straight forward, it is more than likely still going to be saved by this player boosting towards us. So we need to make sure that we can hook around the ball to the left side of the net and put it away. And that is exactly what we do. So we capitalize on the mistake and make use of proper shooting to give us a tie game. So we got two more things that we're going to want to point out in this game. And this first moment is going to come right here we got the clear off the backboard recover fairly nicely but then right there you'll notice that we just kind of stop moving and at the higher levels of play when you stop moving like this 
you kind of just become a sitting duck for this demo. So this is a couple things, right? It's uncertainty of what's going to happen with this ball, and it's a lack of awareness of where our other opponent is. So in this instance, it's very clear that this player is going to get a touch on the ball, so sitting dead still here really doesn't give us any advantage, because this ball is either going to come back across the field in a fairly tight angle, or it's going to be coming downfield this way towards the corner and towards the backboard. So sitting still here doesn't really do us any good. So what I would actually like to do here is avoid the midfield because we can guess that that's where our opponent is probably going to be sitting. We can just turn around back up the wall because then if the ball does come towards the backboard, we can be there to play it. And if it does go towards the midfield, we can see our teammate over here will be in a position to circle around on that. So we want to make sure we keep our options open and sitting here dead stopped waiting for a touch to come out really is not the play that we want to be making because it makes demos way too easy. Because as we'll see, very easily takes us off the field. And in this would have been a play for K, we would have rotated back just fine, would have been there to support him. It all works out anyway because K does get a great clear, but that could have been a dangerous situation by giving up a demo that we really didn't need to. And now the last moment we're going to want to take a look at is right here. K pushing through the corner, opponent on low boost, ball is going to bounce down. Now let's look at the positioning of myself and my opponent. So from our opponent's perspective here, we can see that there is a very big difference in the gap between the ball and the player in terms of our opponent and myself. So in this situation, as last man back, there is almost no reason why we would want to jump for this. The possibility of this guy being beat out by us is very minimal, and as you can see, our teammate is still in the process of recovering, so we don't really want to dive in and leave him in an awkward situation going back down the field. So we need to be able to identify when we're clean beat through the ball, especially in situations like this when we're easily the last man back. But as you can see, we wait for a second and then jump, but we're still miles away from the ball in comparison to our opponent. So even though we jump earlier, they easily get the ball past us, and it is a free transition. Luckily, they don't do a whole lot with it, but again, we've left our teammate in a fairly dangerous situation because we weren't thoughtful in our approach to the ball. So as the rest of this game plays out, overall, the things that I think this really showed us is that our rotations occasionally cause a bit of problems. We've rotated too tightly into net a couple times, and it's left us in awkward situations with the ball bouncing off the ceiling along the backboard. The other thing we need to be careful of is maintaining movement around the field. We don't want to become sitting ducks for our opponents to demo. That's always bad. And then lastly, we want to make sure that we're making the right decision when going for the ball, and we want to make it quickly. If we're going to hesitate on going for a ball or not, there's no point in us even being there because we're very easily going to be beat out by our opponents. So if we're going to hesitate, we might as well just leave. And we also want to make sure that when we do decide to go for the ball and we do make that decision quickly, that we're not putting ourselves out of position and we're not going to end up being clean beats and leave our teammate back all by himself in a 2v1 situation. So that's kind of all the stuff that I recognize through that game. I do hope you guys found this video helpful as we do secure the win right there. I do recommend that you guys give this a shot for yourselves. At the end of the day, if we want to be able to take down our opponents, we need to understand what we can do to be more threatening to them. If we only ever look at the game through our own perspective, we're missing the opportunity to understand what things we can do to make our opponent's life more difficult. Of course, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you click that subscribe button right down below so you make sure you don't miss any future Rocket League content. Additionally, if you'd like to be more involved in this community, please consider joining my Discord link down in the description. So thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. See you later, guys.